Hello dear children, how are you? I hope you all are in the best of your health. Today I welcome you in the science class and here we are going to discuss part 1 of chapter 10 of class 10th science that is light, reflection and refraction. Children, when you enter in a dark room, why are you not able to see anything? What else we need to see different things? Yes, the answer is light. In previous classes, we have learned that an object reflects light that falls on it. That reflected light when enters in our eyes enables us to see different things. In this part of chapter, we are going to learn something more about reflection. Spherical mirrors, image formed by spherical mirrors, uses of spherical mirrors and a sign convention for reflection by spherical mirrors. We are going to discuss all these topics in detail. But before this, it is necessary to learn to understand some important terms. So, let's have a look. What is light? Light is a form of energy which produces the sensation of sight in us. Ray of light, the path traveled by light is represented by a straight line. One such line is known as ray of light. Beam of light, group of light rays traveling together is called a beam of light. Incident ray. Any ray which falls on the reflecting surface is known as incident ray. Reflected ray. Any ray which is reflected back by the reflecting surface is known as reflected ray. Children, now let's start our chapter with reflection of light. Children, you might have observed that when light falls on any surface like wall, mirror or any polished surface, then it returns back in the same medium. This process of sending back the light rays which falls on any shining surface is called reflection of light. There are two laws of reflection of light which we have learned in previous classes. According to first law, the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Means angle I is equals to angle R. According to second law, the incident ray, the normal at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. These laws of reflection are applicable to all types of reflecting surfaces including spherical mirrors. Children, you see yourself every day in the mirror. That mirror is a plane mirror. The image formed in mirror is always erect equal to the size of the object and is virtual in nature. Here virtual means children virtual means that image cannot be obtained on screen. So image formed by the plane mirror is a virtual image. Now let's discuss about spherical mirrors. Spherical mirror is that mirror whose reflecting surface is the part of a hollow sphere of glass. The spherical mirrors are of two types, convex mirrors and concave mirrors. Let's understand them with the help of an activity. Children, take a big shining steel spoon. Its inward surface act as concave mirror 
whereas its back bulging surface act as convex mirror. Now take a pen in front of its bulging outward surface which act as convex mirror. You will see that the image formed here is erect, virtual and smaller than the object. Again I used term virtual because we cannot obtain this image on screen. Now take this pen near or far from the spoon. You will see that the image is always erect, virtual and is small in size. Now turn the spoon and see the pen in its inner bent in surface which act as concave mirror. You will see that the image formed here is inverted and smaller in size. When you take the pen far from the spoon, the image formed is smaller and inverted in nature. But when you take the pen near to the spoon, you will see that the image now formed is bigger in size. Now, let's see how concave mirror converges the light rays falling on it. For this, we need a concave mirror and a paper. Hold the concave mirror and direct its reflecting surface towards the sun. Direct the light reflected by the mirror onto a sheet of paper and move it back and forth gradually until you find a bright sharp spot of light on paper. Actually, this spot of light is the image of the sun on the sheet of paper. This point is the focus of the concave mirror. You will observe that the paper starts burning due to light rays of the sun. Now, Let's see some important terms related to spherical mirrors. A spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards that is faces towards the center of the sphere is called a concave mirror. Whereas the spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outwards is called a convex mirror. The center of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is called the pole. It is usually represented by the letter P. The reflecting surface of a spherical mirror forms a part of a sphere. This sphere has a center and it is called the center of curvature of the mirror. It is represented by the letter C. The radius of a sphere of which the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror forms a part is called radius of curvature of the mirror. It is the distance between P and C. It is represented by letter R. An imaginary straight line passing through the pole and the center of curvature of a spherical mirror is called the principal axis. The principal focus of a concave mirror is a point on its principal axis to which all the light rays which are parallel and close to the axis converge after reflection from the concave mirror. Whereas the principal focus of a convex mirror is a point on principal axis from which a beam of light rays initially parallel to the axis appears to diverge after being reflected from the convex mirror. The distance between the pole and the principal focus of a spherical mirror is called the focal length. 
it is represented by letter small f. There is a relationship between the radius of curvature that is r and focal length that is small f of a spherical mirror. Radius of curvature of a spherical mirror is found to be equal to twice the focal length that is r is equals to 2f. Now children, let's see image formation by spherical mirrors. We can study the formation of images by spherical mirrors by drawing ray diagrams. To construct the ray diagrams, in order to locate the image of an object, an arbitrarily large number of rays emanating from a point could be considered. However, it is more convenient to consider only two rays for the sake of clarity of the ray diagram. The intersection of at least two reflected rays give the position of image of the object. For example, a ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection will pass through the principal focus in case of concave mirror or appear to diverge from the principal focus in case of a convex mirror. A ray passing through the principal focus of a concave mirror or a ray which is directed towards the principal focus of a convex mirror after reflection will emerge parallel to the principal axis. A ray passing the center of curvature of a concave mirror or directed in the direction of the center of curvature of a convex mirror after reflection is reflected back along the same path. And a ray incident obliquely to the principal axis to towards a point P on the concave mirror or a convex mirror is reflected obliquely. By using any of these two rays, we can make ray diagrams easily. Dear children, now let's see image formation by convex mirrors. First of all, when object is placed at infinity, imagine the light rays fall on the mirror parallel to the principal axis and after reflection, the reflected rays appear to emerge from point F, that is principal focus. We can see that here the image is formed at focus F. It is virtual and erect and very small in size. For second position, we place object between infinity and pole of the mirror. Imagine one incident ray comes parallel to principal axis and after reflection it appears to emerge from principal focus. Second incident ray passes through C and reflected back on the same path. Both the rays intersect each other at point A dash. By joining the line A dash B dash, we obtain image A dash B dash. This image is formed between P and F and is virtual, erect and diminished in size. Dear children, let's try to form image by a convex mirror. Here for this activity, we have a convex mirror on mirror stand, a candle which act as an object and the screen for obtaining the image. Here we will try to obtain the image of the candle on the screen with the help of a convex mirror. So let's try. Here I have kept this candle between the mirror, convex mirror and the screen. You will see that for any position of the candle, 
we are not able to obtain any image of the scandal on the screen. It means when we are not able to obtain the image on screen, the image is virtual because virtual images are not being obtained on screen. So, where the image of the scandal should be obtained? In mirror? Let us try. Now, you are able to see that a small, erect and virtual image is here in this mirror. Why I have said virtual? Because we are not able to obtain this image on screen. It is here in the mirror and it is smaller in size, virtual and direct for any position of the candle. You can see that the image of the candle is in the mirror is virtual and erect and smaller in size. So, here we have seen that convex mirror always forms a virtual and erect image of an object which is always smaller than the object. Now, let us see uses of convex mirror. Convex mirrors are commonly used as rear view mirrors in vehicles because they always give an erect and diminished image. Convex mirrors gives a wider field of view as they are curved outwards. Thus, convex mirrors enables the driver to view much larger area. Dear children, now let us understand image formation by concave mirrors. For this, we use this table. Here you can see that for six different positions of the object, we obtain different positions of the image. First of all, when we place object at infinity, then image is formed on principal focus F, which is highly diminished, means small in size and real and inverted. Now, why real here? Because we can obtain this image on screen. You will observe that as we take object near to the mirror, the image formed far from the mirror. For second position, we place object beyond C, then the image formed between principal focus F and C and it is diminished in size and real and inverted. Now, when we place object at C, the image also forms on C, which is now of the same size as the object and real inverted in nature. For fourth position, object is being placed between C and F and the image is now formed beyond C. It is now enlarged, real and inverted in nature. Next, as the object is placed at F, the image formed at infinity. And now, it is highly enlarged, real and inverted in nature. Now, for last position, when object is placed between F and P, the image is now formed behind the mirror, very enlarged and virtual and erect in nature. Virtual because now we cannot obtain this image on the screen. Dear children, let us try to form images by concave mirror. For this activity to show the image formation with the help of a concave mirror, and we need a concave mirror here in the mirror stand, a candle as an object and a screen to obtain image. Now, we are going to place the candle between the mirror and the screen. Now, you will see that an image is formed on screen. Look here. As we move this candle far 
from the mirror you will see a very sharp image is present on the screen of this candle and look here the image of this candle is inverted in nature and as we are able to obtain this on screen this is a real image which is inverted and smaller than the size of the object it is smaller than the size of the flame of this object so as we we will move towards the mirror you will see that the image on the screen is going to be blurred it is now increasing in size and slowly slowly as we reach near to the mirror you will see that the image on the screen is slowly going vanished now we are not able to see any image on the screen this is the position which is we can say the object is placed between f and p for this condition concave mirror form a virtual and enlarged image which is virtual and erect because virtual because we are not able to see this position in the on the screen that is why this image is here virtual and direct so here we have seen different images formed by concave mirror for different position of an object dear children now let's see some uses of concave mirrors concave mirrors are commonly used in torches search lights and in vehicle headlights to get a powerful parallel beams of light they are often used as shaving mirrors to see a larger image of the face the dentist use the concave mirrors to see large images of the tooth of the patients large concave mirrors are used to concentrate sunlight to produce heat in solar furnaces now let's learn sign convention for reflection by spherical mirrors while dealing with the reflection of light by spherical mirror we should follow a set of sign conventions called the new cartesian sign convention according to this the object is always placed to the left of the mirror it means that the light from the object falls on the mirror from the left hand side all distances parallel to the principal axis are measured from the pole of the mirror all the distances measured to the right of the origin are taken as positive and those measured to the left of the origin are taken as negative distance measured perpendicular to and above the principal axis are taken as positive whereas distances measured perpendicular to and below the principal axis are taken as negative now let's see mirror formula in a spherical mirror the distance of the object from its pole is called the object distance it is represented as small u the distance of the image from the pole of the mirror is called the image distance and it is represented as small v the distance of the principal focus from the pole is called the focal length which is represented by small f the relationship between these three quantities is given by mirror formula which is expressed as 1 by v plus 1 by u is equals to 1 by f while using this formula we all must use new cartesian sign convention according to this the distance of object u 
is always taken as negative for convex and concave mirrors because object is always present at left hand side and the distance to left hand sides are taken as negative. As the object is always placed on principal axis, the object height is always taken as positive for convex and concave mirrors. Focal length small f is in positive for convex mirror and negative for concave mirrors. Image distance v is in positive for convex mirrors and is negative for concave mirrors till the object is not placed between f and p. Images formed by convex mirrors are always virtual and erect in nature whereas images formed by concave mirrors are real and inverted except the one situation where we place the object between f and p. Now let us understand magnification. Magnification produced by a spherical mirror gives the relative extent to which the image of an object is magnified with respect to the object size. It is expressed as the ratio of the height of the image to the height of the object. It is represented by letter small m. m is equals to height of the image that is h dash by height of the object that is small h. m is equals to h dash by h. It is also related to the object distance u and image distance v as m is equals to minus v by u or we can write m is equals to h dash by h is equals to minus v by u. A negative sign in the value of magnification indicates the image is real whereas a positive sign is in the value of the magnification indicates that the image is virtual. So dear children now let us see what we have learnt in this chapter. The process of sending back the light rays which falls on the surface of an object is called reflection. Mirrors and lenses form images. Images can be either real or virtual depending on the position of the object. Spherical mirrors are of two type, convex mirror and concave mirror. Mirror formula 1 by v plus 1 by u is equals to 1 by f gives the relationship between the object distance u, image distance v and focal length f of a spherical mirror. The focal length of a spherical mirror is equal to half its radius of curvature. Dear children, now let us discuss some questions and I hope that you know the answers. Question number 1. If the image formed by a concave mirror is observed to be virtual, erect and larger than the object, where should be the position of the object? Yes, in case of concave mirror when we obtain a large erect image, it means the position of the object is between the pole of the mirror and its principal focus means between P and F. What type of images are formed by convex mirror? Yes, convex mirror always form small, virtual and erect images. If your image always appears erect, no matter how far you stand from the mirror, which kind of mirror is it? Yes, exactly right, that mirror is a plane mirror. 
what will be the focal length of the mirror whose radius of curvature is 30 centimeter as we all know that radius of curvature is equals to 2 f for f the formula will be small f is equals to r by 2 r is 30 centimeter here so 30 by 2 is equals to 15 centimeter so the focal length of that mirror is 15 centimeters children now i have a question for you to do in your notebooks do read your chapter thoroughly understand it and then do it right in your notebook the question is draw ray diagrams for the image formed by concave mirrors so you have to draw all the six ray diagrams for all the six positions for the object so dear children here we come to an end of this chapter i hope that you understood the chapter nicely in this chapter we have learned about different kinds of spherical mirrors that are convex and concave mirrors how these mirrors are used in different functions how convex mirrors are used as rear view mirror in vehicles, how the images are formed. So, I hope you find the chapter very interesting. So, keep studying, keep smiling and stay healthy. Thank you.